This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Chelsea. Chelsea is a champion surfer, so she's accustomed to moving super fast, which is why she relies on super fast broadband brought to her through Flow's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her family sharing and surfing and saving each month. Combined, she bundles her Flow mobile, home phone, and TV services so she can enjoy much more for much less, and so can you. Visit any Flow retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994, or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. It's Thursday, September 15, and this is your Bobby This Day afternoon update. So glad you could join us. I'm Kmar Jordan. A Christchurch mother of three is breathing a sigh of relief after her home was spared severe damage following an early morning fire at Vauxhall in the same parish. The blaze, which occurred just after six, destroyed a neighboring wooden house, which was unoccupied at the time. The woman, who identified herself as Sharon, said her home received minor damage to the roof and windows and slight water damage. She praised the quick response of the fire service. Christchurch West MP Stephen Lashley was on the scene and he spoke to Barbados today. We should be very thankful that the fire was contained to this particular house, uh, unoccupied. Uh, I understand that the owner is out of the country and the house was rented. So I know that the police and the fire service are doing the investigations. The house next door received some water damage, but happily that is all they have to do, do some cleanup in terms of water. Uh, so generally speaking, while we had the fire, there has been really been no major uh, follow in terms of the neighboring properties. And um, the, I believe there's been some dislocation with electricity. And, um, you know, I think we look forward then to the outcome of the investigations. But this is a case where, you know, worse could have happened. I want to thank the uh, very quick response of the fire service and, of course, the police and the residents in the area, of course. In other news, this Thursday, a leading player in the Caribbean tourism sector tells the region it cannot afford to relax despite the current tourism boom. The warning has come from Chief Executive Officer of Sandals, Adam Stewart, as he addressed the morning session of the Caribbean Tourism Organization's State of the Industry Conference underway at the Hilton Barbados. Stewart noted the positive outlook despite the challenges posed by the Zika virus, Brexit and a dormant Canadian market. But he cautioned that the region should not underestimate the power of technology to influence the choices of the travelling public. We've got to get creative. Complacency in a new media world is not sustainable. Things are moving rapidly. We cannot content when our customers are not. They are changing. I know it. You know it. Every one of us in this room knows it. While the United States continues to be the breadbasket for many of our regions, the American traveler is evolving and has evolved. They have more options. They are more sophisticated traveling consumers who cross age and wage, yearn for authenticity and experience. And, baby boomer, and the baby boomer generation, with the time and the money to go where and when they wish, are being courted by destinations all around the world. And make no mistake, our competition is making an impact. Stuart's comments came just hours after Tourism Minister Richard Seeley similarly urged countries to ready themselves to tackle new challenges as he addressed the last night's official opening. Eight and a half years ago when the late David Thompson invited me to be in his cabinet, there was no such thing as Airbnb. There was no such thing as Uber. Uh, Brexit um, also did not exist. And Cuba was an island nation in the Northern Caribbean. But now all of a sudden, these entities have entered into our lexicon. And we have to deal with these realities. Outspoken Government Minister Donville Innes is not happy with the state of garbage collection on the island. He says his St. James South constituency was severely affected by the problem. During a meeting with constituents last night, Innes urged residents to ease the problem by recycling their garbage and getting involved in cleanup efforts. He also challenged the St. James South Constituency Council to lead the way. I'm deeply concerned about the state of garbage collection in Barbados. And the residents of St. James South are not immune to that. I'm very mindful of the challenge of the Sanitation Service Authority and as their minister and others have been trying to do their best on these circumstances. But I certainly like the council here, as other councils in the island ought to do, and that is to help us get engaged in a recycling program, get involved in the education of the public and constituents in terms of the need to pay more attention to the packaging material you purchase, 
uh, separating of garbage, recycling wherever possible. Because at the end of the day, if we are to have a healthy and cleaner environment, we need to have a lot more of this done at the community level. I believe the Constituency Council is well poised to do that. Meantime, President of the Constituency Council, Tyrone Lowe, has been defending the organization's track record. He told last night's meeting held at Queen's College that the council's work was being affected by persistent criticism that its work is political. Mr. Lowe says he's hoping that councils could soon be recognized as nation builders. You go to a spot to remove a bit of debris or remove some garbage or whatever, and a person wants to know if there's going to be elections next year because they associate such things with political activity. You drop off a flyer in a shop to help a person to come to a meeting and the fellow wants to have a round of beers for good measure. Again, because they figure well, you're canvassing, so surely you are going to buy beers for the boys. I suppose it will take some time to have that stigma removed. But I trust that just as the youth commissioners and just like the Paris ambassadors have come to be a permanent fixture and a well accepted um, part of our government public service delivery that we see the constituency council as a remarkable opportunity to get involved in directing the affairs of your fellow uh, persons and to make significant contribution to your country. There's regional and international news after this short break. Now, St. Lucia is opening its doors for other airlines to compete against regional carrier Liat. Prime Minister Alan Chastanay, a long critic of Liat, says his government will not allow any one carrier to hold his country to ransom. He's adamant that Liat's model does not work and that the market needs to be liberalized. Chastanay says discussions are ongoing with other carriers and are at an advanced stage. And once they're concluded, he will make an announcement. He however insists he has no grievances with Liat, but argues that no one can deny that inter-regional travel is difficult and the cost is simply too high. On the international scene, the office of the Filipino president, Rodrigo Duterte, is denying alarming accusations that he ordered a militia group to carry out extrajudicial killings while he was mayor of Davao City. The claims were made by a witness who testified this morning before the Philippine Senate Committee set up to probe alleged extrajudicial killings. The man who identified himself as Edgar Motobato testified that he was part of the 300-member Davao Death Squad. He alleged that the DDS killed more than 1,000 drug dealers and criminals in the southern city of Davao on the order of Duterte when he was mayor between 1988 and 2013. Well, that's news and sports at this hour, but for more, you can log on to www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, or you can like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, our screenplay at a gas station or supermarket near you. You can also check us out on ch Channel 99, that's on Flow TV, or Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Kmar Jordan. Have a fabulous afternoon, and be sure to stay locked to Barbados Today.